Welcome to Seize the Mains Daily Answer Writing Initiative Part 2 or Season 2. I am Surbhi Sardana and I am taking this lecture discussion on how to write good answers for state civil services or UPSC civil services so that you can make it to the final list. The schedule for season 2 that is 32 lectures starting from today till May 3rd is available in the description below. You can download it from there and follow this lecture series with us. Starting with our today's discussion, it's day 29 of Seize the Mains and the topic for today is from GS paper 1, Indian culture. So, as far as Indian culture is concerned, there are, a st there are static topics, static questions that are asked, which will be asked from the basic knowledge that you have uh, around architecture, around Indus Valley civilization, around the culture, around paintings, things like that, music literature, things like that. The other kind of questions that UPSC has been asking every two or three years is interrelation of culture from past with the present. So, uh, and Bhakti movement is one of the favorite topics of UPSC. So, today we have taken a question from Bhakti movement itself. This year also in mains, a question was asked uh, concerning about one of the saints of Bhakti movements, the contribution of one of the uh, personalities of Bhakti movements. So, today's question will revolve around talking about two personalities that is uh, Guru Nanak and Saint Kabir and their contributions to Indian society as a whole in light of bhakti movement. So, let us read out the question. The contribution of Kabir and Guru Nanak to Indian society is eternal. Discuss in the light of bhakti movement. So, you have to talk about their contributions to Indian society. They have a lot of contributions to humanity as a whole, but particularly to Indian society, especially around bhakti movement, their contributions around bhakti movement, you have to discuss those. This answer is uh, there for 150 words and uh, for 10 marks. You can send your answers to this question in the next 24 hours, that is by 9 p.m. tomorrow and we will uh, respond back with our feedback entirely free of cost within the next few days or a week. So, uh, talking about this question, there were many contributors to bhakti movement from many parts of the country, many parts of the subcontinent and these questions have been asked recurrently in prelims and mains examination. So, this is a screenshot, this is a snapshot from themes in Indian history, theme 2, this is NCRT and uh, this is chapter number 6, this is the end page of chapter 6. So, here is a list of all the contributors to bhakti movement. Make sure that when you are preparing for this topic, you prepare all of these, all of these personalities mentioned here separately because questions in prelims and mains are asked again and again from these uh, this area. Also, you can also read the entire chapter uh, for Bhakti movement, this entire chapter uh, from NCRD or from whatever art and culture book that you are following. Talking about today's question which is uh, which specifically concerns about two personalities. So, in medieval India, a lot of processes were going on. There were many sociological realities of that time. There was caste system prevalent. There was untouchability prevalent. There was high. There were high levels of orthodoxy. They were prevalent. So many leaders erupted who gave an alternate view of religion or seeking God. And Guru Nanak Dev and Saint Kabir were few of them. We had seen, uh, we had Mirabai also, we had other people also, but they were one of the most prominent of the personalities and since the question has been asked around them, so you will mention in the answer that they were one of the most prominent people of those times. So, let us see what is the introduction that uh, we have for today. Just like I explained, many poet saints ex uh, engaged in explicit and implicit dialogue with the new social situations, ideas and institutions of medieval India. Saint Kabir and Guru Nanak were two of the most prominent amongst them. Um, you can write about other saints also who were prevalent that time. And moving on to like di directly answer this, uh, directly answering this, this question, Saint Kabir talking about him first weaving a divine fabric. This line, this uh, keyword, this term has been taken from NCRT. NCRT uses a lot of such terms for these personalities. So, you can note down a list and use them directly in your mains answer. So, talking about Saint Kabir first and then we will proceed on to talk about Guru Nanak and we also see that whatever these two personalities were teaching, a lot of them, uh, their teachings united, coincided and that is why both of them have been put together un under one single question. In fact, you can find uh, teachings of Saint Kabir in many of the religious scriptures of Sikhism and also uh, this 
Kartarpur corridor has very much been in news for the last two three years, and a question, a very good question, has not been asked by UPSC from Kartarpur corridor. So, studying Guru Nanak Dev and Kartarpur corridor, or things around that, that becomes very important from the exams point, examination point of view. So, moving on to talk about Saint Kabir first. Let's see what uh, what were his contributions to Indian society. So first of all, you'll uh, you'll talk about who Saint Kabir was. So talking about his birth or his upbringing, uh, things like that are always controversial. So you can choose to write them or ignore them as as given in your general textbooks. Here we are directly writing that he was a disciple of Ramananda, another Bhakti movement saint, and he was one of the most prominent disciples of Ramananda. And then we'll talk about what was his ideology, what did he believe in. So. Uh, Saint Kabir is known to have relations with both Hinduism and Islam. So he he was not against any religion. He was just against the wrongdoings or the dark practices that were uh, that uh, were going on in some of the religions at that time. So with filial attachment to both the religious communities of Hinduism and Islam, Kabir was free from re religious prejudices against either. Kabir believed in oneness of God. So he always said that God is one uh, and. Irrespective of whatever the name you prescribe to him, whatever form of worship that you take, God is one, and his names are different. Forms of God are different, but he's one. So, irrespective of the names by which the human beings addressed him, so uh, Kabir was uh, Saint Kabir was very brave and very independent uh, in his thinking. He was very open about his thoughts. He just uh, portrayed it directly in the public whatever he was thinking and it was always a progressive way of thinking that uh, that he had and it helped the deprived sections of society to follow a certain order to follow a certain way of life and it gave them a ray of hope in their own lives where they were not discriminated where they were, they were not taught about harsh practices to reach to god so he was a man of absolutely independent thoughts and broadly criticized the evils of religions prevalent that time kabir addressed mixed gatherings consisting of muslims and hindus and made disciples from both so this is a very important point that he had disciples from both of the prominent religions of that time and there were gatherings where both hindus and muslims would sit together and listen to him he vehemently opposed the caste system and untouchability and condemned orthodoxy so these were uh, few of the things uh, we have many dark things going on in our society today also uh, like they are different from whatever were going on in that time but that time saint kabir and his practices and his way of life came forward as a ray of hope for uh, people who were discriminated due to caste system untouchability or people who were uh, like sunk in orthodoxy so uh, moving ahead we know that his great writing is the Bijak. We've all uh, all heard about Kabir Das ke dohe, and uh, Bijak is the compilation of all his writings. So he uh, has, uh, has a collection of poems, and those poems, uh, like whatever he was teaching, they appeal to the mass. They appeal to the masses of the, those times, and they were very much required according to the social needs of the people at that time prevalent at that time so kabir has given the people an authentic fact about what is the religion of human beings that one should have this has helped the common people to understand this message very easily so you know uh, this our uh, spiritual relation uh, with the divine and our human self that is something which is very hard to understand and if someone comes and shows you the right way without being very <coughs> harsh or strict on you then that person is considered as the light of civilizations uh, that uh, that person is considered as very much honored by people of those times because that is what people want and that is what people rightly want that is their right so his dohas and popular saying of revolutionary social import are widely known and have become a part and parole of the uh, medieval indian culture heritage after his death the followers of, of kabir both hindus and muslims became known as Kabir Panthis. So this was after his de death that uh, people from both the communities came forward, came together and formed the Kabir Panth. Also, uh, 
देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ दोहाज लाइक टू लाइन स्टेटमेंट्स टू लाइन टू लाइन ऑफ पोएम्स बाय सेंट कबीर विच कंटिन्यू टू गाइड अस एंड इंस्पायर अस इवन टुडे एंड दे शुड बी राइटली यूज बाय यू इन योर एथिक्स पेपर लाइक नॉट द हिंदी वर्जन ऑफ इट बट अ ट्रांसलेशन इन योर एथिक्स पेपर इन योर एसेज एंड इन योर इंटरव्यूज इफ यू कैन कोट दैम एंड इफ यू कैन राइटली कोट दैम इफ इट सूट्स द टेम्पो ऑफ योर इंटरव्यू सो दे शुड बी वेरी मच यूज especially any saint that you have from your area or from your religion that you follow or try or try to follow or your mother taught about a particular saint to you your mother grandmother or any anyone in the family taught you about any of the saints make sure that you make this as your you know a part of your identity and use them in your answers quote them in your answers and uh, then in your interview so uh, when we have this content like people in north india studying about you know saints of or bhakti movement reformers of south india so whatever the content is available to north indians is only from the books but if you are a student who is there in south india or vice versa for south indians and north indians so if you're there, if you're placed in that geographical location so you have an edge if you use the uh if you use or and code the personalities from your own area so you'll have an edge in terms of content you'll have an edge in terms of the upbringing you have got so rightly use it in your entire civil services journey prepare all the saints of bhakti movement very much in detail and prepare the uh, saints which are associated with your geographical location or your religious community more in detail So Kabir's teaching were in perfect harmony with the social and religious needs of the times. He identified himself completely with the concept of an integrated Indian society and won the hearts of millions. So this was about Saint Kabir. This is a very short uh, uh, description about Saint Kabir and his contributions. You can add more from your side. You can talk about um the sets that were formed, the followers, the kind of followers they were there which were there in uh, western India or in central india we had like different sects of followers of uh, like saint kabir so you can talk about them also if there are any other things about uh, except from like his uh, his uh, his uh, concept of oneness of god or his fight against untouchability caste system or anything that comes to your mind add that because uh, any contribution that he has made to the society can be uh, different from your point of view as well and you can add them rightly in your answers so moving on to the second part of this answer and talking about guru nanak and uh, this question is highly expected as i told because kartarpur corridor has been uh, very much in uh, the current affairs so guru nanak was a young contemporary of kabir who took up the cause of socio uh, socio religious reforms in the punjab like punjab was huge at that time as compared to whatever the geographical boundaries of state that we had today like entire northwestern india was known as punjab most of it so he was uh, the one who initiated the bhakti movement in northwestern india and he discarded retrograde elements of selfishness hypocrisy falsehood and violence so these were the positive contributions philosophical uh, positive contributions to start with so his teachings on incorporated the noblest principles of both hinduism and islam moral conduct and action on moral values were his core teachings so if you are related to sikhism or if you have read about sikhism the religious scriptures of sikhism include the positive parts of most of the religions they don't discriminate against the other religions prevalent at that time they were just against the negative practices going on and they have rightly included all the positive sayings of other religious scriptures or other personalities as i told you that many of the things said by kabir uh, kabir das ji has have been included in religious scriptures of sikhism and kabir das ji was a contemporary of guru nanak so this was a very modern religion it was a very forward looking religion so his teachings incorporated the noblest principles of both hinduism and islam moral conduct and action on moral values were his core teachings moral conduct and action on them they were his core teachings so he was uh, like his teachings were more about action putting things to action not just sitting in a sitting back and meditating that was not the idea that sikhism was promoting or guru nanak was promoting his way was in ideal way of living life not renunciation 
so do guru nanak uh, through guru nanak the bhakti movement in punjab became a vehicle of social change a lot of people converted into the new religion that was uh, that was born and uh, not uh, not as a form of like separate religion but because whatever the wrong doings were go, uh, going on that time in the society they were tired of those and they wanted a new way of life and what is religion religion is just a way of life how you maintain your daily conduct or your spiritual practices so uh, it became a vehicle of social change and it was the intensity and depth of his message fortified and consolidated by successor gurus that served as an edifice on which the superstructure of sikhism was built so he laid the foundation stone for a progressive religion for this region most of the religions in fact all of the religions have uh, progressive practices but after some time when like negative practices or uh, you know take the front seat and religion takes a back seat then either separate religions or different form of religions are born or sub sects within the religion are born which uh, give a ray of hope to the people who have been discriminated against so in five rounds uh, his udasis are very famous what were udasis he traveled across the indian subcontinent and across and beyond in sub indian subcontinent to propagate this idea of new form of living so uh, in five rounds of travels called udasis covering a period of more than 30 years guru nanak carried the message of divine worship to every nook and corner of the country so guru nanak differed from other saints of the bhakti movement this is the most important point that uh, many religious philosophies talk about renunciation of life or you know leaving leaving the household and going to some place to meditate and uh, leaving the household entirely but the teachings of guru nanak dev they were entirely different because he taught that e your duty as a householder is your first duty and that if you're doing that ideally that is your that shows your devotion to god or that is a form of serving god so he was an ideal householder himself and he motivated people to be, to take responsibility for feeding their families to work hard and to feed their families back home so guru nanak differed from other saints of the bhakti movement on the concept of god and world the policy of renunciation of the world or detach detachment with worldly responsibilities did not find place in his teachings he advocated householder's life for his devotees he denounced the leading of life as an ascetic and put great emphasis on hard work and earning livelihood for him taking care of one's family and providing food and shelter for them was one of the prime duties of man before god so here we are talking about uh, kartarpur also on the bank of river ravi like towards the end of his life he set up a dera there where we have a very you know renowned gurdwara uh, now where we took up the plow to set the example of an ideal householder you know to feed his own family he took the, uh, he uh, like he led by example he took up the plow himself so guru nanak adopted universal brotherhood and championed the cause of hindu muslim unity you know uh, the whatever major personalities that we talk about or we refer back to in history with a positive mindset are the ones who have talked about unity and universal brotherhood you can take that in the case of saints you can take that in the form of religious leaders or in uh, like kings also which we revere and we look back to at uh, and we look back at with very much pride and honor so they were the ones who talked about unity about protection and universal brotherhood so he introduced community lunch Guru ka langar is very famous in North India and all over the world. So it is known as community lunch in English. When you are talking about Guru Nanak Dev Ji or Sikhism, make sure that you use this term because uh, this was one of the first things happening. At his era, as a practical step to eradicate the evils of caste discrimination and untouchability from amongst his followers, so that you know uh, the idea of everybody sitting together. having meal under the same hall under the same roof or just sitting together and uh, having their meals so this was a blow to caste discrimination and untouchability which propagated the idea that people from different castes cannot sit together and eat or cannot eat together from the from the same utensil or things like that so the this was 
his uh, like idea of community lunch so guru nanak consciously projected new goals envisaging a socio religious order based on the concept of universal brotherhood social justice and humanitarian cultural vision that would engender peaceful coexistence and mutual understanding through explicit acceptance of cultural pluralism that all cultures can exist together see this is uh, these are like very elaborated points this is a 150 words answer and we also aim to provide you the right kind of content for writing answers so that you don't have to go back to your books and read everything again so don't think that this is your answer this is your entire answer take keywords or uh, just form one line for each of the points and then write your answer so here we have talked about uh, both the saints uh, like uh, guru nanak dev and a uh, saint kabir in detail you can add points from your side especially if you're from north india there uh, i'm sure you there'll be uh, many points you would add, you would want to add to uh, like uh, these two personalities to the content that we have here so add it from your side use them in your ethics answer there are many sayings like standing up for, uh, for the truth and following the right path said by guru nanak dev ji so you can follow that and uh, like since this is a 150 words question give a conclusion that unites both the philosophies that uh, what was the combined contribution of both these personalities so thus both kabir and guru nanak played a key role in bhakti movement through their teachings and creations why are we writing about bhakti movement because that was the demand of question that we have to discuss it in the light of bhakti movement both held bhakti tradition to reach masses in their language and allowed spread of bhakti movement in various parts of the nation so their greatest contribution was towards what was their greatest contribution towards eradicating the social evils towards promoting the universal uh, towards uh, the idea of universal brotherhood their greatest contribution was towards eradicating social evils prevalent at that time and giving a new hope and a way of life to the common people which continues to guide humanity even till today which is very much right like uh, in our local language books also we read a lot about the contributions of these personalities or we read a lot of literature especially when it comes to hindi and punjabi uh, we read about a, uh, we read a lot of direct literature which has been a contribution of both of these personalities and it continues to guide the lives of people people like me you who have read who have been through these literature uh, this literature contribution so um, this was your conclusion send your answers to us in the next 24 hours you can definitely add more and more content from your side more facts mo a separate way of thinking how you want to start your answer how you want to end your answer and that is what your creativity is about that is will get you that is what will get you more marks this is uh, that screenshot from ncert make sure that if you want to add some more points or get a, a deeper view of uh, this topic you refer to themes in indian history theme 2 um, themes in indian history part 2 and uh, the chapter number 6 and prepare all of these personalities in detail prelims is approaching and bhakti movement like contemporaries of bhakti movement are asked many a times by like uh, are asked every other year by upsc so prepare all of them in detail so this was the first lecture of part 2 or season 2 of seize the mains we'll continue with like 31 more lectures one month uh, like till may 3 so that you have one month before prelims send your answers to us at this email id you can download the pdf for this lecture from the link in the description below see you with another discussion tomorrow keep working hard increase the timings that you are giving to your studies there's no end to that and also take care of your health and uh, stay motivated all the best to you